Hey there, good morning. Coming up, the flight fiasco Southwest canceling thousands of flights this holiday weekend and thousands more today. Stranding passengers, some may be stuck for days. And now the federal government is launching an investigation. All of this a result of that deadly holiday weather killing more than 50 people. We will be live in Buffalo. That is a city paralyzed under four feet of snow as the West gets ready for a new storm system. Also, the latest on that newly elected congressman accused of making up parts of his life story. He's now admitting he, quote, embellished his resume, but he is insisting that he will take office next month. And it's our GMA gym. Get a head start on your New Year's resolution to get in shape with four of the country's top trainers. They will get you and us moving this morning. So stick around right here on GMA. And ahead in the next hour of GMSA, getting financial control is a popular New Year's resolution. We'll show you the best way to plan ahead so you can make the most of your money as far as best money moves. And flashing lights now at Loop 410 and Bandera Road. We'll have details with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Good morning, I'm Max Massa. We are in front of the Southwest Gate here at San Antonio International Airport. One of the few flights on time and leaving out of San Antonio for Southwest. We're gonna give you the latest update from Southwest and the U.S. Department of Transportation. And ahead this hour, West Side Apartment fire leaves two people without a place to stay. What crews know so far about that fire coming up? Once someone gains access to a classroom, with a, high, with a high capacity magazine, semi-automatic, high velocity rifle, AR-15 styled firearm. The lethality is horrific. In the wake of several mass shootings we witnessed in 2022, a local surgeon is fighting to end gun violence. We'll show you what he's done so far. A high scoring victory for our San Antonio Spurs last night. We've got all the highlights. Plus, we'll tell you why tip off ended up being delayed last night. Sarah Spivey says we are experiencing a light breeze right now at 601, but this is probably the last time for the next several days we'll see freezing temps in the San Antonio area. How much things are going to warm up later this week. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, December 27th. Did you have a nice holiday? I did. Thank you. How was yours? It I mean, was, I, I know you worked a lot. I, I was here. I yeah. went home to Corpus Christi for yeah. less than 24 hours. <laughs> I was going to say, every time I turned on the channel, either it was you or Sarah Spivey <laughs> or Max Massey. You know. We, we enjoy it, though. We do. We you are do. family here. We are, you know. <laughs> You're ready for a nap, but you enjoy it. You know what? Hey, who isn't ready for a nap right. at this point? You know what? We are dealing with that light freeze, like yep. you said, Sarah. You know, we've had about five mornings in a row here where temperatures have been at or below freezing. And around San Antonio right now, the official temperature is 33, but I think we could drop a degree or two here before sunrise. Otherwise, though, it's 27 in Bernie, 27 in Bulverde, 30 in Port SA, 31 in New Bromford. 28 in Kerrville and 25 in Comfort. This morning is going to be the coldest morning for the next several mornings. We're starting a warm up trend. Today we'll be able to get to near 60 degrees. 44 at 10, 53 at noon, 60 for the high temperature. Winds will be turning to the south at about 5 miles per hour. But again, today is the coolest day over the next several days. By the weekend, we're going to be in the 70s. It's going to be gorgeous. And if you're planning on traveling across the state of Texas today on the roads, there should not be any weather other issues. However, that's a different story for most of the nation. Another system is moving in, affecting the Pacific Northwest. So once again, delays at airports and cancellations are expected on this busy travel day. In fact, our Max Massey is live right now at the San Antonio International Airport. Max, have you spoken to any Southwest customers? I know there's been a lot of cancellations with Southwest. Good morning, Sarah. We have been talking to a lot of customers, some very frustrated, some having some interesting choice words. A lot of people with some success stories, though. You know, not only did they have their Southwest flight canceled, but they went then booth to booth to booth, trying to figure out a flight, trying to get home. And we did hear some success stories. One traveler we talked to actually getting a $200 voucher from Southwest. But if you were at the airport yesterday, it was chaos. Lines around the door. But take a look now. That Southwest gate, it's empty. Now, the one flight this morning, one of the ones that we know is not canceled, that actually just departed a few minutes ago. 
And like we were saying, a lot of people who flew Southwest, who their flights were canceled, they had to go to other flights. So there are other flights going on today. And we've been showing you the big board through the morning. A lot of cancellations, specifically from Southwest customers complaining that they're forced to wait on the phone between two and four hours before getting live representative to talk to them. Obviously, a very frustrating situation. But Southwest actually putting out a statement on their website today, you know, addressing all of the cancellations and really all of the chaos that's leaving families stranded across the country. So I'm going to read part of that statement to you. Uh, the airline giving the advisory update in part saying with consecutive days of extreme winter weather across our network behind us, continuing challenges are impacting our customers and employees in a significant way. That is unacceptable. And our heartfelt apologies for this is just beginning. We're working with safety at the forefront to urgently address wide scale disruption by rebalancing the airline and repositioning crews and our fleet ultimately to best serve all who plan to travel with us. And guys, we talked to one traveler this morning and he said he was in line for about four hours yesterday. He said, if you do have a flight coming up within the next few days, make sure to check the status before you even come to the airport. And then when you do come to the airport, he advised people to bring snacks, bring water, because if you're like him, you might be waiting here for hours. You're going to hear from that passenger, that traveler coming up at 630. Stephen. Thank you, Max. We'll continue to track that traffic trouble uh, back here actually out on the roadways 410 at Bandera. You know, there's trouble out there in the air, but we are starting to see some of that continue here out on the roadways. 410 at Bandera is along the frontage road. We have detected our first crash of the morning. Uh, looks pretty serious. Uh, we see several flashing lights and road flares out there, so just a very difficult spot to really zoom in on. But we are trying to get some more information confirmed from our friends over at Transguide. Hopefully everyone's doing OK out there, but you can see here on the map 410 eastbound at Bandera Road. State Highway 16 is where it's been reported. Thankfully, we're not seeing any delays or congestion just because the commute is still pretty quiet at this point, but we will watch that closely. Giving you a wide look at the map, thankfully there is not a lot else to show you out there, just quiet roadways, so a perfect opportunity maybe to travel into San Antonio. If you're traveling along I-10 in those westbound lanes from Seguin, it's still pretty green, 29 minutes at this point. Right now, 87, if you're traveling in from Lavernia in those northbound lanes, it's about 33 minutes to the Alamo City, and that drive time from our friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes. So just take your time this morning. This is an incident that we'll track closely as we get a closer look at trans uh, from this trans guide shot. You can see that uh, some of the vehicles are actually uh, coming to a pause or a slowdown, I should say, but we'll watch it closely and have updates throughout the morning. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, crews trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire at a west side apartment building. This began around 930 last night on Castroville Road, not far from South General McMullen and Highway 90. Firefighters say flames broke out inside one of the units and then spread into the one story building. No one was hurt, but two people are without a place to stay for the time being right now. They're being helped out by the Red Cross. Now to updated information on that boil water notice affecting subdivisions in Bear, Bandera and Kerr counties in a state from the Texas Water Utilities. They say the freezing temperatures this week caused a higher water demand leading to line leaks, which in turn resulted in a drop in water pressure. On the screen now are the places impacted. The other counties affected are Kerr and Bandera. Nearly 2000 homes are affected. Some areas are having the water tested as soon as possible, while others will have to wait until the pressure is restored before testing can begin. People who have any questions regarding the order are asked to call 1-866-654-7992 to read the full statement from Texas Water Utilities. Along with updates from each subdivision, head over to ksat.com. A security scare at the AT&T Center last night led to a lockdown and a delay in the Spurs versus Utah Jazz game last night. The game was delayed by 30 minutes after the AT&T Center surrounding parking lots and roadways leading to the county owned facility were placed on a lockdown. That lockdown happened just after 7 p.m. A BCSO spokesperson confirmed officials were alerted to a trash can that forced BCSO and NBA security to execute the shutdown protocol. It was later determined there was no threat and the lockdown was lifted. 
608 right now. This San Antonio trauma surgeon who treated patients following two mass shootings is joining with other doctors to fight to end gun violence. Here he is, Dr. Ronald Stewart, part of the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma. He works here in San Antonio. The committee drafted articles focused on preventing gun violence and death. The goal is to present detailed research and create realistic solutions. Work to understand and address the underlying root causes of violence while simultaneously working to make firearm ownership as safe as reasonably possible. A committee made up of doctors is recommending more extensive background checks, permits to purchase certain guns with high capacity magazines, and treating mass shootings as terrorism. Right now on KSAT.com, we have embedded the articles Dr. Stewart and other surgeons wrote surrounding gun violence. We now turn to the crisis on the southern border and new information overnight about the buses of migrants dropped off outside the home of Vice President Kamala Harris over the weekend. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the story. This morning, days after buses of migrants were dropped off in 18 degree cold on Christmas Eve outside the vice president's home in Washington, a spokesperson for Texas Governor Greg Abbott confirming the migrants came from Texas, saying they willingly chose to go. Many of the migrants, including children, were not wearing proper winter coats and clothing. Abbott's communications director saying the migrants signed a voluntary consent waiver in multiple languages. Abbott recently spoke to ABC's Martha Raddatz about the bus drop off in multiple cities. And I removed them to locations that self identified as sanctuary cities that have the capability and the desire to help out these migrants. And so that's exactly what's taking place. The White House calling the move on Christmas Eve a shameful stunt, but Abbott's office firing back, slamming the White House as a bunch of hypocrites. The back and forth comes as both sides await a ruling from the Supreme Court on Title 42, a pandemic era policy that allows the government to expel asylum seekers on public health grounds. The Biden administration argues the COVID emergency is over. Abbott says otherwise. Uh, whether it's COVID or some other issue, when you have people coming across the globe, without knowing at all what their health status is, that almost by definition is a public health risk. There's every reason to keep that in place. And now new figures show the extent of the crisis. Nearly 1.6 million people are now waiting for their asylum applications to be processed, a record number, with cases now seven times higher than a decade ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Topping your morning consumer headlines, more workers are returning to restaurants in the U.S. The COVID pandemic led to huge cuts in food service jobs, but recent Labor Department numbers show they're nearly back to pre-pandemic levels. Last month alone, restaurants and bars across the country added around 62,000 jobs. Holiday sales are up more than expected this year. MasterCard spending Pulse says shoppers spent 7.6% more this year than they did last year. So spending at restaurants and on clothing leading the way experts also say inflation helped push some shoppers to wait till later in the season, hoping to score deals on purchases. 6 11 33 degrees. Much more to come on GMSA, including the dramatic rescue caught on camera. We'll show you how some kayakers saved a pilot whose plane crashed into an icy creek in Maryland. And just ahead, have students found a new way to cheat on assignments? Why a South Carolina professor says yes. Sarah Spivey says we are hovering at freezing temps this morning, but this is the last time in the next few days that we'll experience those freezing temperatures. Things will warm up. She'll have our forecast when we come back. In today's Tech Bites, Elon Musk says he's activated nearly 100 Starlink terminals in Iran. The SpaceX satellite internet service could help Iranians get around the government's restrictions on internet access amid ongoing protests there. Starlink works by connecting satellites with user terminals on the ground. A South Carolina professor is warning that students can easily cheat using a new artificial intelligence chatbot. He says chat GPT can respond in seconds on a wide variety of subjects with information that looks like it was written by a human. And it's difficult for teachers to actually prove when a student uses a chatbot. Lots of flashing lights in one part of town right now. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos. 
Unfortunately, Mark, Sarah, we do not have a better update to report here along 410 at Bandera. Let's get a wider look from our friends over at Transguide. Now, this is a shot we're seeing. Obviously, plenty of flashing lights out there, road flares as well. Uh, trying to make out exactly where the vehicle at, in question has, is located out there, but we can see that it is a pretty active scene. Uh, this is on the frontage road, so it's likely that we'll see this scene take place. Uh, investigation, I should say, for a little while longer. Just make sure to watch out for those first responders. We're picking it up right there in those eastbound lanes of 410, not far from Bandero Road. So an area you have to be on the lookout for. And as I mentioned earlier, hopefully everyone is doing okay out there. But giving you a wide look at the map, thankfully everywhere else it has been a quiet start to the morning, but we know the work is going to continue on our roadways. And we're talking about construction. Let's talk about what's taking place here along FM 2252 and along Nacogdoches Road. Bridge work will actually take place in the new year, Thursday, January 5th, up until Friday, January 6th. Uh, it is going to be overnight, so late night owls, you early bird commuters, be on the lookout because the full closure of the lanes in both directions at Evans Road at the Evans Road intersection. Pardon me, but if you want to plan your commute from now up until 2023, scan this QR code that is now on your screen by tapping the center of your camera app that will take you directly to our case at traffic page. I've updated the list of all the closures that are current and some that will be taking place in the early start of next year. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, sir. Hi, Sarah. Hey, good morning, guys. You know what? I don't know about you, but I'm ready to thaw. Yeah. It's been a little mm -hmm. cold out there recently. And the good news is, is if you're a fan of warmer weather, it's going to be a lot warmer over the coming days. In fact, the Climate Prediction Center is not only saying that we have a good chance of being well above average uh, from the end of the year into January 4th, but areas that were very, very uh, hard stricken by that winter storm have a potential to be much warmer than average too over the coming days here in Texas though and in San Antonio this is what our forecast high temperature looks like our average high temperature is 63 so today we're going to be cooler than that with high temperature right around 60 but notice that this is going to be the coolest day over the next seven to ten days by New Year's Eve weekend we'll be looking at highs in the mid to upper 70s around San Antonio so feeling a lot more like spring by the start of the year right now it's 33 degrees outside at the airport, you know, temperatures are probably going to briefly touch freezing here before sunrise in San Antonio. That was expected. One last freeze for us early this morning. It's 30 in Hondo, 26 in Kerrville, 31 in Uvalde, 30 in Eagle Pass, 31 in Pleasanton, and 31 in New Braunfels. Temperatures are also very close to the dew point, so I would not be surprised if there's a little frost on the ground up in the hill country. Once that uh, temperature, the, the dew point gets below 32, we call it the frost point when a frost can form. So that might be possible. If you've got a frost picture out there, make sure to send it into our KSAT Connect app, uh, KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. After this cold start, temperatures are going to steadily warm. By 10, we'll be in the mid-40s, 53 for the uh, lunchtime temperature, and in the afternoon, 60 degrees for the high. Winds will be from the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Elsewhere, it should be 59 in Canyon Lake, 60 in Kerrville, 62 in Uvalde, 62 in Creso Springs, 66 in Tula 62 in Beeville. All right, our weather setup across the state of Texas quiet, but there are some travel woes uh, from uh, one system that's leaving and bringing lake effect snow to the Great Lakes and another system that's entering the United States right now across the Pacific Northwest. A lot of snowfall, a lot of rain with that system. Now here in Texas, it's going to be fairly quiet over the coming days. Tomorrow, 66 around San Antonio for the high temperature after morning clouds. Thursday, we'll see a morning fog and a high temperature near 72 with only a chance for an isolated shower or so around uh, San Antonio. Coverage should only be 20%. And then as we head into Thursday afternoon and evening, severe storms are going to be possible across East Texas. So unless you have to travel on Thursday in the evening across East Texas, you won't have to worry about any kind of weather issues on the roads. But just be aware that severe weather is possible in East Texas on Thursday evening. Uh, then Friday here in San Antonio, we'll have a high temperature near 72 under mostly cloudy skies. Looking ahead to the New Year's Eve weekend, it's going to be pretty great with mornings in the 50s, afternoons in the 70s, lower humidity over the weekend so it won't feel uh, sticky outside, which is good news there for us. And unfortunately, not a lot of rain with that 20% chance for an isolated shower on Thursday. By the way, I've got to look at Fido's forecast coming up, the dog walking forecast. forecast. So if you wanted to send in a picture of your pup, do so on the weather app.
couple of champagne flutes on the seven yeah, day cheers. chair. Clink. A good uh, outdoor party for bringing in the new year. Great outdoor a barbecue or anything like that. Perfect yeah. hair, perfect outfit. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. 621, 34 degrees. Go Spurs go. The silver and black get a much needed win last night here at home. We have those highlights and get you ready for the next game. I'm not slowing down anytime soon. That's why I take OsteoBiflex every day. It's clinically shown to improve joint comfort in seven days and continues to improve over time. Kind of like us. OsteoBiflex. Find our coupons in Sunday's paper. When you can barely smell your plug-in, what are your guests smelling? Try Febreze Fade to 5 Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Had enough? No, arthritis. Here, aspicream arthritis. Huh, full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the aspicream. Shingles. The rash can feel like an intense burning sensation and last for weeks. It can make your workday feel impossible. The virus that causes shingles is likely already inside of you. 50 years or older? Ask your doctor about shingles. The Silver and Black back in action at the AT&T Center last night, welcoming the Utah Jazz to town. Spurs were on top of this one from the get-go. Seven Spurs finished in double digits with Devin Fussell's 24 points leading the way for San Antonio. Spurs get the W in what turned out to be a high-scoring affair. The final from AT&T Center, Spurs win 126-122. and 122. Next up for our Spurs, they'll hit the road to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Tip off for that game is set for 7 o'clock tonight up in OKC. Go Spurs go. Go, Spurs go. It's 625 and 34 degrees. Is getting on top of your finances one of your New Year's resolutions? Still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, why experts say most people fail their money savings goal and what you can do to stay on track in 2023. Checking TransSky. This appears to be our only major problem spot right now at uh, down on the access road of Bandera Road, so off the main lanes of 410. If we get any other information, we'll let you know. Are there any other places you should avoid as far as problems? Stephen will tell you coming up. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at San Antonio International Airport, and we are seeing cancellation after cancellation after cancellation. A lot of frustration from a lot of families. We're going to have the latest from Southwest and the U.S. Department of Transportation. A scary crash on the west side of town sends one man to the hospital. We're told he's fighting life-threatening injuries. We'll tell you more about it. Get out of the water. Just get out of the water and just hold tight. And then I just, I just pickaxe backwards and got my kayak back onto the ice and he was out of the water. In Maryland, some kayakers are being called heroes after they saved the life of a pilot whose small plane crashed into an icy creek. We'll show you what was captured on camera. Outside with live cam, we got a little warmer yesterday, but then we had a little front move through and it's cold again this morning. So you definitely still need a jacket. The good news, it is already starting to brighten up out there a little bit. The days are starting to get longer. Good morning. It's Tuesday, December 27th. For those who may not know what day it is. That's right. And it's very possible you don't. Thanks for starting your morning with us here on GMSA. Yes, definitely need the jacket this morning, but there is a warming trend and that is fantastic news for most South Texans. There is a warming trend and this morning is likely going to be our last morning freeze for at least a little while around San Antonio. We've been able to see temperatures just below freezing around San Antonio at Kelly. It's uh, 30 degrees, 32 at JBSA range. Randolph. San Antonio right at 33, but I think we'll briefly touch freezing here. Elsewhere, it's 31 in Yavaldi, 31 in Pleasanton, 29 down in Kennedy, 31 in New Braunfels, and 26 in Kerrville. Fido's forecast for the day today, Toby and Bella absolutely slaying this picture. Beautiful picture there of those pups. If you would like for your pup to be on Fido's forecast, you can scan that QR code and go ahead and upload your picture. If you're planning on taking the dog for the walk, 
walk today. Chilly at uh, 10. It'll be 44 right around noon. Sunny and 53 60 degrees this afternoon for the high temperature. A cool day all in all. Now as we take a look at the weather setup across the state of Texas, it's going to be quiet. If you're hitting the roads, there shouldn't be any travel problems on the roadways from weather. But as you can see across the nation, it's a different story, especially out west where another system is expre expected to bring additional disruptions uh, for any kinds of flights out there. As we know, Southwest has had some issues over the last day or so. Our Max Massey is live right now at the San Antonio International Airport. Max, what are you seeing out there? Good morning, Sarah. Well, yesterday it was chaos here. Lines around the building, but take a look now. Behind us is the Southwest and it's calm and quiet. No one even in line. And that's partly due because a lot of the flights that were supposed to go out this morning, they were actually canceled. So we've been monitoring the flights through the morning. Take a look. We're right under the big board and you can see cancellation after cancellation after cancellation. And to the left of everything that says canceled, that's Southwest. So obviously Southwest having big issues, not only with flights, but also with customers reaching out to help. On their website, they posted in part, quote, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and please know that we have all available hands on deck working to serve our customers, end quote. Now the U.S. Uh, Department of Transportation, they're investigating Southwest and they actually tweeted out, U.S. DOT is concerned by Southwest's unacceptable rate of cancellations and delays and reports of lack of prompt customer service. The department will examine whether cancellations were controllable and if Southwest is complying with its customer service plan. But these apologies in this investigation, it's not helping families get home any sooner. I was in line for four and a half hours, but the people that were here probably after me were probably in line for at least an hour or two longer than that. But judging by how long the line got after I got here. And we spoke to Greg Best earlier this morning, one of the many travelers that we talked to, each one having a different, unique story. And just a few minutes ago, we saw someone walking by and we overheard on the phone him saying, my flight got canceled. So a lot of frustration, a lot of families trying to figure out what comes next. But make sure to stay with us on air and online as more information comes about. Stephen. Thank you, Max. Well, some travel trouble here on the roadways. We have been showing you this shot at Transguide at 410 at Bandera. Let's get a wider look. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that much has changed out there. This shot showing that traffic is coming to a slowdown there along the Axis Road. And notice as you step out of that shot, we do have a few road flares that are also in place. Now, I haven't been notified of any big closures out there, but this is in one of those busy areas. As you can see along the highway, 410 traffic is already getting pretty busy out there. And that's because even then we know a lot of kiddos are out for the holiday, but still some folks have to head to work today. So just be careful as you get the commute started. And as I mentioned earlier, hopefully everyone is doing OK out there. Uh, we take you to the map and here where that crash is reported is along 410 eastbound at Bandera Road, State Highway 16. But thankfully, we're not seeing a major delay just yet, but give it some time because we know a lot of folks are going to be getting out there on the roadways. Uh, but giving you a wide look of the metropolitan area and the surrounding areas, not a lot to show you out there, just some quiet roadways still to take advantage of it if you can. That will likely change in the next few minutes or so, but it probably wouldn't be as bad as what we would normally see on any given day. But we'll still keep a close eye on the roadways. Again, this crash here, 410 eastbound at Bandera Road is the only major incident being reported at this time. But again, just check that out, that access road. We are starting to see some bumper to bumper traffic out there. Just not a good spot to be at at this time. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. A man is fighting for his life this morning after a crash on San Antonio's west side overnight. Happened around 1230 this morning near Highway 151 and Ingram Road. And that's where crews say a driver rolled his truck in one of those freeway pillars. He became pinned between his truck's door and the ground. Firefighters were able to free him. He's now in a hospital and the last check was in critical condition. There's no word yet on what caused the man to crash his truck. A man is dead this morning after being hit by a truck while walking across the street just west of downtown. Officers were called to the scene just after 7 last night on Buena Vista near South Colorado and South Smith Streets. They found the man dead when they arrived. His name has not yet been released. Witnesses told police after the truck hit the driver, the driver took off. So police, police say a suspect has not been found. 
We've learned the name of the person found dead in a burned vehicle hidden in some brush on the city's south side. She's 22 year old Braylon Sampson. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Her body was discovered back on December 10th near I-10 and the I-37 exchange. San Antonio police say the vehicle was off the roadway when they found it. The medical examiner's office says Sampson died from burn injuries and smoke inhalation. The cause of her death still being investigated. Looking ahead as 2022 comes to a close, we invite you to go behind the lens to meet some of our photojournalists. KSAT is airing a one hour special presented by our talented staff. We'll tell you what stories they remembered the most this year and take you behind the scenes. What goes into covering the stories you see right here on KSAT 12? There's Thursday, December 29th at 9 p.m. Some other top stories were following for you this morning. The Texas National Guard has installed over two miles of fencing since the first feet of fencing went up in the El Paso area just last week. That's according to a Texas National Guard spokesperson. As of Monday, around 22,000 migrants were sleeping in shelters and makeshift encampments across three northern Mexico cities. And that number of people is only expected to grow as Title 42 remains in state of legal limbo. Thousands of migrants are made are making the decision either to wait for the Trump era pandemic policy to be lifted or cross into the U.S. illegally. And take a look at this next story. Some kayakers up in Maryland are being praised this morning for helping to, re to rescue a pilot of a small plane that crashed into an icy creek. It happened at the town of Edgewater, Maryland. According to police reports, say the plane's engine began to sputter shortly after takeoff. The kayakers, a father and son, saw the sinking plane after it came down. They paddled as fast as they could to help the 71-year-old pilot who was standing on the aircraft's wing. That pilot is in the hospital this morning and is reportedly doing OK. The cause of the plane crash is still being investigated. Well, coming up today on Good Morning America. Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Oh, he died. <laughs> Yo, we got to go check on those people. A terrifying avalanche at a ski resort in oh. Austria over Christmas weekend. Luckily, everyone survived. What you should do if you're ever caught in an avalanche on the slopes, that's oh coming God. up at 7 oh on God. Good Morning America. Oh, that's terrifying. Okay, it is 638 and 33 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA is getting financial control one of your New Year's resolutions. We'll show you the best ways to plan ahead so you can make the best money moves in 2023. 642, Sarah, don't look, but the New Year is literally I'm not looking. Okay. I'm not looking. Have you, hey, have you thought about your New Year's resolution? No, not yet. Okay, I have ne not. neither have I, but I know one of the main goals for a lot of people is getting their finances under control. The odds are against that resolution. In fact, studies show about 91% of us will throw in the towel within the first month of the new year. Nancy Alvarez has some pro tips to keep you on target to hit your money goals as you usher in 2023. It's time to figure out ways not to drop the ball on your financial goals next year. And one of the quickest ways to start is to take a look at what happened in 2022 and see if you can make any improvements. Look at your auto insurance, see if you can shop it around and save money. Look at your homeowners, start saving money annually. Look at uh, all of your, not only your credit card statements and your debit card statements, see what you could scale out. But Next, plan a daily five minute money check-in. Every morning, check your bank and credit card apps to see how you're spending. It will make you more aware of your daily expenses and purchases. Experts also say be sure to pay yourself first. Set up a savings plan and make sure each time your paycheck is deposited, money is automatically put into your 401k or other savings plan. Another trick is to open multiple online savings accounts, like the Capital One 360. Here, you can deposit money each month into specific accounts, such as entertainment, home improvement, vacation, or children. Reward yourself with micro-saving goals that encourage you to reward yourself monetarily for achieving other life goals. Since most of us don't carry cash, you can use the app Tip Yourself. Every time you go to the gym, give yourself $2. Finish a difficult task, add $5. Use this money to do or buy something for yourself. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. 644. We're gonna check in with Steven. I see those flashing lights cleared yet. 
Yes, uh, okay. better update here along 410 at Bandera. We had some pretty big problems out there that lingered for about maybe half an hour or so. Uh, but you can see here we have it on rotation now. Things have cleared out, but still traffic's getting a little bit busier around the Alamo City. There's 281 right by the airport. Very dark out right now still, but uh, give yourself plenty of time. It's just morning rush, but I wouldn't say there's any real big reason to rush right now. Uh, again, that crash has cleared out. It was located off the Loop 410 eastbound right there at Bandera Road. You may still encounter some road flares out there, but other than that, it's uh, already cleared. And you can see here on the map, it's pretty much the same story. Thankfully, not a lot to show you at 644. It's a perfect time to get the day started. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a breakfast taco, or maybe uh, some a burger. I don't know. People like burgers for lunch. I was just mm -hmm. saying I wanted I know, a burger. I, I, yeah, <laughs> so if, you, if, if that uh, is something that you enjoy, definitely do it. Right now, traffic shouldn't be too much of a problem. I was, well, it's funny that you mentioned burgers. I was going to say one of my resolutions for next year is to eat better, but uh, that means we still wow. have the rest of the week. So, oh, yeah. Make, yeah. Knock Brisket, yourself out. Uh, I made steak the other day there for myself. Yeah. yeah. Treat yourself. Sounds my good. resolution is to also treat myself and have more fun. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Oh, Sarah good. Spivey. I know. We were just talking we should do a Corpus trip. That'd be yes. fun. Yes. Yes. Um, hey, speaking of trips around Texas, if you are planning on traveling, here's a look at your Texas travel. Travel cast over the next few days. Nice and quiet around uh, Texas today. We do not anticipate any issues on the roads as far as weather is concerned. By tomorrow morning, it'll be a chilly start, but temperatures should warm uh, into the 60s, mid 60s on, two, on uh, Wednesday, rather, tomorrow in the afternoon. And then here's the thing by Thursday, around San Antonio, it should be quiet. We may have an isolated shower, but it's Thursday afternoon that we could see some severe storms across East Texas. Texas. So if you're planning on hitting the roads today, have loved ones planning on hitting the roads today or tomorrow, that should not be an issue. Most of Thursday should be quiet other than in the late afternoon and evening hours across parts of East Texas. Outside right now, it's a cold start to today. 33 degrees, northwest winds at about 10 miles per hour, so a little wind chill out there too. Dew points are in the 20s, that's pretty dry. Uh, 28 in Eagle Pass right now, 30 in Crease of Springs, 28 in Kennedy, it's 31 in New Braunfels and 24 in Kerrville. Looking around the metro area below freezing in Port SA and in Converse. In San Antonio, I think we briefly touched freezing here, so that's our fifth cold, our fifth uh, freezing morning in a row since Thursday. 28 in Bernie, 25 in Comfort, and 24 in Kerrville. Now, today's future cast shows nothing but sunshine. Temperatures uh, will be warming steadily. Winds will be from the south at about five miles per hour. It'll be 57 in Converse, 60 in San Antonio. 57 in Bulverde, 58 in Comfort, 59 in Bandera, 55 in Gonzales. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast after the freezing start, quickly warming by 10 will be in the mid 40s. In the afternoon, 53 degrees around the lunch hour and 60 for that high temperature. All right, let's talk about those dew points. I mentioned that it's chapstick weather out there with dew points in the 20s, very dry desert air in place, all from that front that moved through last week. Now that dew point will be steadily rising over the coming days. Notice that dew points get up into the upper 50s by about Wednesday and Thursday. That's noticeable. You know, it won't necessarily feel muggy outside, but you'll notice that it will not be as dry. And tomorrow, those dew points rising is going to have a big impact on our uh, how warm it gets in your neighborhood. So this is a look at early tomorrow morning. It's going to be chilly and cloudy around San Antonio. Temperatures should be above freezing. As we head throughout the day tomorrow, half of our viewing area will have sun to the west and half will have clouds to the east. So depending on where you live, your afternoon high temperature is going to be drastically different. Around San Antonio, I forecast high temperature in the mid 60s. It'll be closer to the uh, near 60 degrees east of San Antonio, but with plenty of sun near 70 degrees west of San Antonio. So take a look at that seven day forecast for you. Again, temperatures are going to be on the rise. We'll be looking at highs in the mid 70s by the weekend. A very nice New Year's Eve weekend for us with uh, high temperatures in the mid 70s, lows in the 50s. Great way to ring in the new year. Just caution you with any fireworks because it's been so dry and that small chance for rain Thursday isn't going to do much to help us out, especially in those areas outside of Bear County. Right in areas in northern Bear County and Kendall County, Comal County, exceptional drought in place. Thank you, Sarah.
Right now we're at 648, 33 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, the pandemic affected just about every part of our lives, especially our kids' education. With testing scores at an all-time low, how to keep your kids' mind moving during the holiday break, that's tomorrow on GMSA. And winter is here, so a cold start to the day, but the days are slowly getting longer and the sunrise just a little bit earlier. Taking a live look as we take a peek at the eastern horizon on your Tuesday, the 27th of December. Federal emergency assistance now on the way to a western New York currently crippled by more than four feet of snow and bracing for more. Certainly it is the blizzard of the century. The Buffalo area reporting at least 29 storm-related deaths, more than half found outside, and more than 500 have been rescued from extreme conditions. I heard him screaming for help. This woman credits quick-thinking neighbors for helping her get this man, suffering from apparent severe frostbite, to an emergency room. Buffalo is banning travel on its now treacherous roads and its airport is remaining closed until at least Wednesday. It's been catastrophic. It's been a failure at every level. The Department of Transportation now looking into Southwest Airlines canceling of more than half of its flights Monday and Tuesday. This one started west, swept east and impacted uh, almost every single one of our largest airports that put us in a position where we struggled to recover. System wide airlines canceled more than 36 hundred flights Monday, stranding passengers across the country. My daughter's in New York City all by herself, you know, very sad. It ruined our Christmas. And scientists caution extreme winter weather could become more common, finding climate change is leading to a rapid warming of the Arctic, which can play a role in driving frigid air farther south into the U.S. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Before you go, a man is fighting for his life this morning after a crash on San Antonio's west side. It happened around 1230 in the morning near Highway 151 and Ingram Road. That's where crews say a driver rolled his truck into one of the freeway pillars. He became pinned between his truck door and the ground. Firefighters were able to free him. He's now in the hospital at last check. He was still in critical condition. No word yet on what caused the man to crash his truck. Crews are trying to figure out what sparked an overnight fire at a west side apartment building. This began around 930 last night on Casterville Road, not far from South General McMullen and Highway 90. Firefighters say flames broke out inside one of the units, then spread to the attic of the one story building. No one was hurt, but two people are without a place to stay for the time being. Right now, they are being helped out by the American Red Cross. Our San Antonio Spurs are back in action tonight, coming off a high-scoring victory against the Jazz. Now they'll hit the road to take on Oklahoma City Thunder. Tip-off for that game is set for 7 o'clock tonight in OKC. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Well, it's five minutes till 7. So far, we've been pretty lucky on the roads this morning. We have. Yep, traffic's a go, and it uh, looks pretty all right here at 35 at New Braunfels, but check out that sunrise. Beautiful shot there from Transguide, but as it's been, as Mark mentioned, it has been a pretty quiet morning out on the roads. We did have our fair share of problems, but right now you can see the map pretty much just shows a lot of green out there, and it does look like we may have a few stalled vehicles out there as well, so if you have any big road travel plans, just make sure that you check your vehicles, and of course, make sure you check those gas prices. Here's one last look from our friends over at AAA, what you can expect if you have to fuel up in and around the country or the Alamo City, Sarah. It's cold too this morning, just at freezing around San Antonio, 28 in Bernie, 27 in Bulverde, and 29 in New Braunfels. Heavy coat right now, but by the afternoon, you'll just need a light jacket, 60 degrees for the high temperature. This is going to be the coolest day over the next 7 to 10 days. We're going to be warming up into the mid-70s by the weekend with only a small chance for an isolated shower on Thursday. All right, Sarah's, thank you, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back here at 9 a.m. GMA is next.